Hey folks, welcome back. So this is my IBM uh, 5150 PC. I picked this up off eBay from a seller in Quebec and it was listed as powers on has errors. So I think uh, that just tells me that the, the power supply is good, but I'm going to test that anyway. It also tells me that there's possibly no shorts in it. Uh, otherwise the power supply wouldn't come on. So I think we're, we've, we've got a good base to start with. Uh, of course, there's a lot that can go wrong between uh, having a, a, a machine that powers on to having a working machine. Um, but uh, in anticipation of me being able to solve all the problems, I uh, went ahead and I bought some accessories. I'm going to need for it anyway. Now it, it comes with a color graphics adapter but I don't really have a monitor that uses a color graphics adapter. Um, this is the, the best that I have. It's this uh, little TV over here. And so the best I can get with that is 40 columns and the colors are not going to be great. And it's just, yeah. So uh, one, of the, one of the accessories I did get for it is this VGA card. And I know that this VGA card works with the standard IBM 5150. Um, I know it, it could be put in an AT bus, but it, it also work in the XT bus or the FPC bus. I also got this keyboard adapter. Uh, these old style keyboards with the uh, DIN 5 connector on them are, you know, they're rare and people want a lot of money for them. Um, but this is fine. It takes a, a regular PS2 keyboard, converts it to this, and uh, I can then use a, a Regular PS2 keyboard, which are much, much easier to come by. Um, USB would be even better, but uh, this is what I was able to get. I also got this micro RAM card to fill out. That. This is a 256K machine, so I could fill it in between 256K and 640K with this. And I also got this XTIDE. This is the, uh, the CF Lite version. It uses compact flash, and it's a small little board that actually emulates the disk drive for me and I got a GoTech floppy drive now these get you know these come in in various different styles this one here is a um, particular adapter for use of PCs I'll leave a link down in the description as to where I got all of these things um, most of them got off eBay but this one's already modified it's ready to go hopefully I got a little USB key that looked like a key to go with it, some hardware here, and then some other little pieces here. So this here's a five and a quarter inch bay mount for the GoTech. I'm taking out one of these drives here, probably this one, put the GoTech in there, and uh, whichever one of these drives works best, I'll put that in this location here. A blank plate, I don't think this is going to be a perfect fit. This is just a random thing that I had lying around, but I should be able to make it do something. Of course, a power adapter for the GoTech, and then a cable adapter that will adapt from uh, the pin type um, cable connector of a three and a half inch to the uh, card edge type connector of a five and a quarter inch. And that's it. So first, the first step though is to try and get the thing going. So I'm just going to be using the CGA card along with this monitor for that process. Uh, the very first step, of course, is to get the case off it, unplug the power supply, and they're going to use these big resistors here. I think they're 150 watt. Um, I'm going to be using these to load the power supply to make sure it comes up. If the power supply comes up, I'm going to measure the voltages on it, and then I'm going to go and measure, make sure there's no shorts. I don't think there are any shorts because if it powered up, there are no shorts, but I'll just quickly check the 5 volt and 12 volt rails to see if there's, I see any shorts there. And if all that is okay, then I'll actually try to power the machine up and see what these errors are. So let me set up for that and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we've got all the powers disconnected. Uh, we've got it off both the drives, we've got it off the motherboard. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in some resistors. I'll show you those in a second. But I'm going to plug uh, those into here to load down the, the 5 volts and the 12 volts so should get this power supply going if it's going to go. Then I'm going to check uh, the voltages. I'm going to check the red as 5 volts, plus 5 volts. The white, which is supposed to be minus 5 volts. Then I'm going to check the gray. 
And the gray is supposed to be minus 12 volts. And then of course the yellow is plus 12 volts. This orange one here, um, that can sometimes have a voltage on it, uh, sometimes not, it's not important, but it's, it just tells the, uh, the motherboard that the five volts is okay. So uh, we, we can check that too. More than likely it'll have five volts on it. And uh, if not, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, so here's, the, here's the big hefty resistor the 5 ohm resistor that we're going to, or 2 ohm resistor that we're going to check the 5 volts with. And here I have in series two 10 ohm resistors for a total of 20 ohms which are going to be plugged into the, the uh, 12 volts. And uh, that'll load down the supply enough to get it working. Because these, these power supplies, these older switching power supplies, don't like to start up without a load on them. Um, they use the load to, to sense the current. And here's what we're going to do. Just plug this right into one of the floppy disk uh, connectors. So we'll do that now. And uh, we're going to power on to see if the, the fan comes up. Success. I don't know if you can hear it, but um, if you look over here, you can see the fan is spinning. I'll turn it off. So the power supply came up, which is good. Now I'm going to switch the view to show you the uh, multimeter as I test those uh, wires that we saw before. Let me set up for that. We'll be right back. Okay, here we're going to measure the red wire for the plus 5 volts. That's bang on. I'm going to measure the yellow wire for the plus 12 volts. That's bang on too. Here we're going to measure the white wire. Minus 5 volts. That's bang on as well. Now the gray wire for the minus 12 volts. Ah, we're good. Let's measure that orange wire, see what we get. Yeah, we've got plus 5 volts on there. That's fine too. Alright, next thing to do is to set up to measure shorts on the main circuit board. Um, just give me a second and uh, we'll set everything up to do that. Okay. So I'm just going to measure the, the plus 12 volt rail and the plus 5 volt rail. Um, I think we'll just go from there. I don't think I have to measure the other two. I might. But let's, let's go ahead and measure the plus 5 volt rail. Uh, okay, we're on. Yeah, we're on almost ready to go. But 33, that's exactly what should be expected. So that's, that's great. Plus 12 volt rail. So we'll go up a notch there. So 781 ohms, 784, just some capacitors charging, that's, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, let's see if we can even get down into, measure the other ones. So this here, this here would be the minus 12 volt rail. That's fine too. And then the minus 5 volt rail. Oh, perfect. So we got no shorts. We have good voltage from the power supply. So I think now the thing to do is just uh, set it all up again and uh, power it up and see what happens. So let me set up for that and we'll come back. Okay, well, let's boot this thing up. There goes nothing. Well, that's a good sign. That means the BIOS was able to detect and enable the color graphics adapter. Okay, we have a memory error, 201, and it's 100A. 201 is memory error, 100A is a, tells you where the memory error is. So that would be bank one and bits zero in 
the high order and A in the low order. A would be uh, at least two chips. Let's, let's take a closer look at that. Here we have a detailed look at the memory on this motherboard. You can see that this is a second generation motherboard. It's a 64K to 256K. This is here, this bank zero here is the uh, 64K that comes as a minimum soldered into the board. Uh, they provide sockets for banks one, two, and three, and in my case, they're all fully populated. Now, here is the parity bit, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And these are the data bits over here. Um, this chip here is the least significant bit, this is the most significant bit. And uh, the error that we got, 100A, and what that means is that um, the error is in bank 1. And the 0 means that none of these chips here ha had a problem, but two of the chips over here had a problem. Hexadecimal A is 1010 in binary. So we go 1010. So this, this chip here and this chip here we're being told are bad. So we're going to get those out and replace them and we'll see if we clear up that the errors. Hopefully that'll be all we have to do because as I said I only got five memory chips to put in this thing, five new memory chips that I know are good. So I don't want too many of them to go bad otherwise we're stuck in the water here. But anyway, let's uh, pull those two chips out and uh, we're going to replace them. And I have exactly the same Samsung memory as well, so that's good. It'll be all nicely matched. Uh, I have a, a memory removal tool here. So we'll pull that chip. And we'll pull this chip. And put them aside, because I don't want to get them mixed up. And we'll put the these ones back the new ones back into place. So we formed the lead on this one. This one's a brand new item. So, okay, that should fit in. Okay, now I'm going to put the disc controller card back in first. And the color graphics adapter. And hook up the video. And we'll fire it up. Let's see uh, if we have any improvement. Okay, cards initialized. Yeah, we're getting a much longer count here, so it's counting through more memory. Okay, so we got 3008 that time. And here comes up the parity check. I wanted to mention that. Uh, so the parity check means that it, it, it can't meet parity. So what the, the IBM looks for is even parity. So if there's only one bit gone bad, then you're likely to get a par parity check error. Or if a parity chip is bad, you'll get a parity check error. Um, if you have two chips that are bad, like we had in the previous case, it still might end up, like if, if both the chips are, are, are either stuck low or both of them are stuck high, you still get an even parity. Um, so you won't get the parity check error, which we didn't get the last time. But in this case, we did get the parity check error, so that is encouraging in that it's telling us that we have only one chip. And we can see from the, um, the code that jumped up here was 3008. So 8 is uh, 1000 in um, binary. So that is actually, that's one of the same chips that went the last time. That's the, the fourth one over in the row. So let's uh, turn it off and quickly pull that out. So it's in bank 3, fourth one over. And replace that. We've now used up 60% of my supply of chips that I 
think we're good because it only showed a single chip bad in here. All right, <clears throat> one more time. Keep your fingers crossed. This is good. There we go. Okay, so it's dropped down into Cassette Basic. Um, so this is what I mean. Like I, I, I couldn't use a computer like this. This is, this is not very clear. It's very limited number of characters on the screen, and yeah, I'd much rather have an 80 column. So that's why I got the VGA card. Okay, so what we're going to do now? I have this uh, MS DOS 3.3 disk here, ready to go. And we're going to try and boot into DOS, see if that comes up. So we'll turn it off again. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way, once you've gotten down into that cassette basic, there's no way to access the drives at all. So you can't even, there's not even a command you can type in to go ahead and boot from disk. So you have to restart. And what I'm going to do actually, I'll let it boot up. As soon as I hear the drive move or start up, I'm going to clamp it down again. Sometimes what will happen is if you clamp it down while the disc is slightly out of place, it may come up slightly out of place. So you'll get a little shimmy uh, as the disc turns and it can cause read errors. It doesn't happen often, but it happens often enough that it's easy enough to do this to avoid it. Like that. Sounds good. Head seeking, reading stuff. Here we are, MS DOS. Ah, down MS DOS version 3.3. .3. Nice. Ah, in the words of uh, Adrian Black, freaking works. Um, so I think I'm going to call it here. We'll come back in another episode and we'll do all the upgrades. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to make a call out to uh, Minus Zero Degrees. Um, it's a website, I'll put a link into it down in the bottom. Uh, that guy who created that site, he is uh, probably the world's foremost resource for information about old IBM computers, especially this one. Uh, most of the information I related to you today, I got from him at one time or another. I mean, I used to support these things way back in the past, but you know, it's 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 been like oh, 30 something years since I had one of these machines in my hands. So it's, it's great that he created that resource. And also a link to whatever I can as far as the uh, accessories that I bought to put in it, the upgrades, and uh, you can look at all that. Well, thanks a lot guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.